Welcome back. We're in Exodus chapter 30, and we're looking at uh, another item here. This is Exodus 30, verses 17 to 21. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, You shall also make a laver of bronze with its base of bronze for washing, and you shall put it between the tent of the meeting and the altar, and you shall put water in it. Aaron and his son shall wash their hands and their feet from it. When they enter the tent of meeting, they shall wash with water so that they will not die, or when they approach the altar to minister by offering up in smoke a fire sacrifice to the Lord. So they shall wash their hands and their feet so that they will not die, and it shall be a perpetual statute for them, for Aaron and his descendants throughout their generations. Okay, so we have this item. Remember, we're in the courtyard. Uh, we have the bronze, the main altar for the main offering of sacrifices out in the courtyard. And out here at the other end, we have the tabernacle, the sanctuary, the, the two rooms, the holy and most holy place inside the Ark of the Covenant and the most holy place. And between these two ends of the sanctuary, there's a laver. There's a, a like a fountain or like a bird bath out there in the middle for the priests to wash at. Now it says here, it's kind of important for them to wash. I wonder if you noticed how important it was. I believe we read here so that they would not die. <laughs> so it's kind of an important thing. You wash if you're a priest. Now, the priest, have you ever noticed here, we've been going through chapter after chapter. Uh, when did we get to the priest's shoes? Well, we never got to any shoes for the priest because guess what? The priests are ministering barefoot. They don't, they, God did not design any shoes for them. There is no Nikes or any kind of shoes for the priests to wear, the priests are doing everything they're doing barefoot. And so here we find out that they need to wash their hands and they need to wash their feet before they go and enter into God's house, the holy place. And so that is part of what's going on here is this, uh, this washing. And it's so important that every impurity would be removed. You can see they're, they're barefoot. They're, they're, touching blood, they're dealing with animals, uh, they're walking about, so you could see that they want would want to be pure, and so that this labor was for the priests to wash. Perhaps at the beginning of their shift, they always washed, and then if they got dirty at any point along the way, they would pause and wash their feet and wash their hands before they went on to the next part of their activities of ministry in the wilderness tabernacle. So this is, uh, this is because God is pure and holy and we're setting, the priests are set apart to do his work. So two more notes. Uh, notice we already mentioned there's a death penalty here. There's like eight instances in Exodus uh, through Deuteronomy here. There's, there's some things that if you do them, it's death penalty. And not because God likes death, but because he's helping the people come up higher. He's helping them make a distinction between the clean and the unclean. So the priests, this is a life and death, okay? And so, yeah, there is capital punishment here if you don't do it the right way. The other thing that I found interesting here, again, was uh, something we've already noticed uh, several other times. Here we have an item, and by the way, how big is it? How, how, what are the dimensions? There are no dimensions given. There are no dimensions given in Exodus. There's no dimensions given in Leviticus, etc. The Bible doesn't give us at any place any, any measurement for this, not even in cubits. Uh, the labor is simply, we're just not given that. Now remember, Moses received instruction. He received a, basically a blueprint from heaven. So Moses knew what it looked like, and Moses was able to guide the workers who created all these things, uh, and he could interact with them, and perhaps he knew an exact measurement, or maybe he said, yeah, make it about this yay big by yay big, and that'll be just fine. So interesting place here. Again, people, I know, I know a lot of people who want exact measurements. How big is the labor? You know, which part is, is high, which part is, does this, how many gallons uh, does it hold, how many firkins does it hold, etc. Uh, but a lot of that isn't really told to us. We don't even really know how much, how many gallons it holds. So it did the job. It was according to the pattern that was shown to Moses in the mountain. Maybe Moses gave more exact details to the craftsmen than we're given in the Bible. Or maybe he said, look, make it about yay big and yay big, you know, and Measure it off. A lot of times when I'm measuring things in my garden, uh, what do I do? I count off the paces. And my paces, you know, it's, it's a rough estimate. I probably don't always have the same exact step each time. But generally speaking, I can measure that way. And maybe that's all that was needed here. It didn't matter whether it was, you know, a half an inch larger than or smaller than somebody might think. So the Bible is a very practical book. And just because we don't have absolute exact to the centimeter, to the millimeter uh, guidance in terms of the dimensions of every piece, 
doesn't really mean that's a problem for us. Indeed, it should show us that some things are more important than others. God has a purpose for these things. Maybe the exact dimensions aren't an urgent piece for us to understand. So they're not given. I'm content with that because I trust the Lord, and I hope you'll be content with that too. Let's carry on tomorrow morning with some more in the book of Exodus as we're studying out now a little bit more deeper on the sanctuary system.